All right, guys, the Build Show is live today. And you know what? We got a great topic for you. Whether you're a builder, a remodeler, an architect, or whether you're designing your own house, everybody's got some doors, and we are going to give you all the information today. We're talking interior doors, exterior doors. We're going to show you the costs, and we're going to show you how they're made so that when you end up ordering your next door package, you know exactly what you're getting. Today's Build Show live. Are you ready? Let's get going. All right, guys, we're talking interior doors today, and I'm coming to you from the BMC showroom in sunny Dallas, Texas, and I've got a couple of door experts with me as well. We've got Aaron and Chris with me from BMC, and guys, I'm really excited to have you. You ready to talk some doors today? Absolutely. All right, so first off, uh, before we get into these doors and the cutouts and all the stuff, I want to tell you about how these doors are made. So these are door slabs, and we're going to be talking about those today. But those door slabs come from a BMC mill shop. And whether you're buying from BMC or another vendor, those doors need to get made up so that they're ready to arrive on your job site. Now, I came a day early so I could see that process. And we made a short video that's just a three-minute video. Let's go see how these doors are made, and then we'll get into all the construction details on the slabs themselves. Let's go. Every builder gets excited when that big white BMC truck pulls up to your job because you know you've got the trim and the doors and you are on to that next phase of construction. Well, today I'm coming to you from their BMC mill shop here in Dallas. This is 300,000 square feet of mill shop. And I'm gonna show you from slab to delivery, everything that happens. Let's go inside and meet Darren. Have you ever seen the TV show, How It's Made? That's what we're doing here. This is where all the magic happens. Now, Darren, talk to me about the process from these doors here where those slabs come in to where they're rolling out to my job site. Okay, Matt, uh, we receive door slabs from our manufacturers flat on pallets like behind me right here. We go through 35,000 slabs a month in this wow. location. So in order to do that, we have to have machinery like this behind you. It's a million dollar door machine. It produces doors in uh, about a thousand a day. That's 2,000 side jams of, uh, for the door frame, 4,000 pieces of casing for, for the doors itself. So what it does is picks the doors up from the front, loads it into the machine itself, runs it through, drives the screws through the hinges, machines all the door parts for the hardware, squares up the frame, and that's how come I know when you call me and say your door's not right, it, I know I made it square, okay? Once it goes through the machine on the other side, the guys attach the casing, stand it up, put it in a buggy, and then it goes out to the shipping area. Once it's in the shipping area, those doors go on the truck together with your interior trim package, and then it goes out to the job site. Now we go one step further. We make uh, throwaway trim carts so that we stack your trim off the ground onto the carts in your garage at your job site so your trim carpenter is able to just pick that material off and a lot easier. Man, I love that trim tree in my garage. I know that that trim's not sitting on the ground, getting wet, getting stepped on. That's a big value add with BMC. Now, Darren, you guys also do exterior doors in this plant. Talk me through that process as well. How's that different from what we just saw in the interior doors? Exterior doors are run through the same way as interior doors from receiving to shipping. The only difference is that uh, we make them weather tight. So we add weather stripping to the frames and we put a threshold on the bottom to help keep the weather out and weather tight that door. Essentially runs the same process, goes to buggy, goes to uh, truck, same thing with your trim package and out to your job site. Gotta say, man, a lot of precision on display here, a lot of craftsmanship. You got a lot of hardworking guys here making it happen for my houses. I appreciate that, Darren. You bet. Guys, let's go back to the showroom and we'll continue the program. All right, guys, we're back to the studio here. And again, we're coming to you from the showroom in Dallas. If you're watching this on YouTube, this was a live event. Make sure you sign up for these in the future. And by the way, if you're on the live event, we'd love to have you ask some questions. 
There's a Q&A button, I believe, at the bottom of your webinar screen. Hit your questions there, and I've got my screen in front of me here so I can see what those questions are. We're going to have some time at the end uh, to answer all those questions. And if you've got something as I'm scanning this that's pertinent for us to talk through as we're getting in it, I might actually uh, interrupt the flow to hit one of those as well. So please ask questions. Now, my experts today, I'm here with Chris and Aaron from BMC. Now, these guys uh, are outside sales reps of BMC, so I have an Aaron and Chris that I deal with uh, down at my Austin branch. Uh, but these guys are working with typically the builders and sometimes the architects and designers as well on the doors on projects. Aaron, let's start with you if you would. We've, we did a bunch of, you guys did a bunch of cutaways for me and I really like the nerdy details. So let's talk about the nitty gritty. And as we go through these doors, guys, we're kind of going from uh, least cost to more costly. So let's start with this first cutaway right here, Aaron. You got it, Matt. All right. so. At your entry level, interior door is what we call a hollow core hardboard door. It is two pieces of hardboard, and I'll, let me just stop and, and explain what hardboard is. This is an eighth inch uh, door skin, if you will. It starts as a three inch fiber and pulp mat that a large steel die comes down and presses down into this eighth inch, super dense, very hard product that will keep its lines. So that's how you get a stamped pattern in the face huh. of the door. It's called a molded panel door. Okay, that's I what always they're think doing. of that as hardboard, right? Or temp right. tempered hardboard? What is, I'm that's, not sure what that term means. but There are different kinds of hardboard, okay? Um, and I'm not sure about the tempering exactly. <laughs> I think that has to do with the surface tension on the skin of it. Okay. But anyway, this hardboard is rigid so it will hold the pattern. When you see two panels, panels or six panels. Got it. That's what's going on here. It's being I mean, it squeezed down into this. Well. Oh, it takes paint great well. It takes paint really well. It is a paint grade door and it takes paint extremely well. It's very smooth. Okay? Makes sense. So they, they make these skins and then they sandwich uh, the style and the rail of the door. Okay. Right? Define style and rail for us. All right. Every door has for the most part, a style and a, two styles and two rails at a minimum. The styles are the vertical members, okay, that are the main support of the door. Okay, so as we think of this door, the side over here is the style. That's, that's right, vertical. coming up and down, that's right. And the rails are the horizontal members of the door that add support. Okay. And then panels are in between, sandwiched by the, the rails and the styles. Okay. So in this door, the style that you see is actually just pressed into the skin. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's aesthetic only. The actual style, the actual structure of this door is hidden behind this skin. In these cases, because this is a relatively low cost, well, actually very low cost door. This is the lowest this price This is point. the lowest <laughs> price point door, okay. Um, the style and the rail are made out of MDF. Okay. okay? That stands for medium density fiberboard, mm -hmm. all right? And it's, it's a very inexpensive um, product to make, mm -hmm. all right? And it, but it does the function, it's solid and it holds these things together. And these are also pretty lightweight doors, right? A 6'8 door might be what, 20 pounds, 25 yeah, pounds? maybe. Maybe not even? That, that's right, yeah. that's right. And I'll tell you, that's the reason they can use MDF styles and rails. Um, on the hinge side of the door, where the hinges are screwed to the door, mm -hmm. MDF's not the best at holding screws, yeah. but with a door that's so lightweight. Doesn't have to hold much weight. Doesn't have to hold much weight. Yeah, that makes sense. So. How about price point at this door? This is our entry level, this is our least cost, this is a, you know most apartment buildings That's or right. low cost production entry level houses are yep. gonna be these. What are, what are we talking about price point, Aaron? Yeah, so when we talk about price point, we need to uh, qualify two things first off. We, uh, we're gonna talk about pre-hung units. So there's mm -hmm. a door and there's a frame, okay? Right. When we talk price point, we're talking about a pre-hung unit, so it's a door in the frame, complete with hinges, ready to put in the hole and then put casing around. Got okay? it, not, in other words, not a slab only where you've got a, exactly. a renovation job, you've got a jam there already and you're just ordering a slab. This is a pre-hung door that when it gets delivered to the job site, it's usually, post sheetrock and the trim carpenter is installing that door and then the painter takes over from there. Or to further clarify, you did a, uh, you did a bit uh, with cavity sliders on pocket doors the That's other right. day, okay? Yeah. And a pocket door, you're buying a slab only, no frame. That's right. When Good we point. talk prices here, we're talking pre-hung with a frame. Okay, okay? got it. So, so around 80 bucks. 80 bucks for a six foot eight, okay? Mm -hmm. um, there are also 96 inch eight foot doors, which are very common in a lot of parts of the country. And you're gonna get more in the 135, 140 range for an eight foot version of this. Okay, got it. Now, what am I seeing here? What is that? Looks like cardboard. It is cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, there we go. If, if the cardboard weren't there, you would be able to squeeze this door together, and and you just get a lot of deflection on the skins. Yeah. And if somebody were to push against the door, this just adds some rigidity That's just inside. Sure that door is not going to push That's in together. Exactly right. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. All right. So we're not going to make value judgments uh, on these doors, but don't buy this door. <laughs> 
you're watching this. But All other right. than that, we're not making value judgments. <laughs> That's right. All right, let's go up the scale. What's the next one we're seeing? Okay, the next uh, level up is what we call a solid core molded panel door. It is the same skin as you saw on the hollow core door, okay? But the door gets thicker and we fill it with a, par a particle board core, all right, that fills probably 95% of the void in between these two skins. This does a lot of things. It adds weight first so that you get a feel of a good solid wood door. That's very important to some folks. These hollow core doors, you try and slam the door, just the air resistance keeps the door from slamming. Not very satisfying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and of course, because it's a, a hardboard shell, if you've got a stiff, um, what do they call those that goes against the wall? I can't think of it. All oh, of a you have the door stops down door on stop. the base uh, stops. Yeah. If you had a door stop that's not the springy doing version, right. it's going to go right through the door if, if it, someone were to slam that door. It definitely can. So this door will slam with emphasis. It will. Okay? It sounds better. It'll take fingers off too, but it'll slam with emphasis. Yeah, it's a lot like more that. satisfying. You know, we can't slam our phones down anymore. <laughs> so right. at least so. we can have a door that sounds solid when you're angry and close it. No, no, no. My kids, no. Don't, don't listen to what he just said. Okay. Anyway, solid core door. Now, one of the things that has to happen here, you'll notice down here, the rail is still MDF, mm -hmm. but the style now transitions to a piece of wood. Okay. This is important because cool. we go up now maybe to an 80 pound door. Okay. okay. And suddenly we need some holding power with the screws that hold these hinges into the door. Does that, that make, make sense? sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. All right. And there's really no issues with this uh, particle board in the center. As long as that door is not getting wet, you shouldn't have any issues with that particle board, right? That's exactly right. Um, let's, let's talk about doors getting wet, though, okay. for just a second, if you don't yeah, mind. Because do this is a really important part. Um, if you've ever read a door warranty, any door warranty, mm -hmm. okay? From any manufacturer. From any manufacturer, exterior doors, interior doors, it doesn't matter. Yep. Right up top in the warranty talks about finishing all six sides of the door. This super is, important. It's super important. And I'll tell you why. I, I, honestly, most people think this is a boondoggle, but it's not, okay? Mm -hmm. It's actually important because what happens is the surface of the door doesn't have any exposed grain, mm -hmm. so you're not really protecting much here. Where, where you expose grain in wood is at the end grain, yep. okay? And so the bottom of the door, the styles have exposed end grain. Mm -hmm. The end grain is the exposition of capillaries in the wood. Yep. The tree is made to carry water through the wood, okay? And they actually suck humidity out of the air into the bottom and into the top of the door. This yep. humidity travels through those veins, if you will, and manifests itself at various points in the door and creates warping. Yeah. Okay? So even an interior door. We get calls all the time from folks that have, say, a laundry room door or a bathroom door. Uh, where there's where high, you have humidity. high humidity. Right? And they can't understand why their door is... Warping. Is not shutting properly against the jam, right? You might right. have some movement. There's some light showing through in the center, let's say, but the top and bottom are tight against the, uh, the door stop. Uh, it's oftentimes because we forgot to paint it at the top or the bottom. And you know where this is the biggest problem? Honestly, a door in a frame is one thing. The hinges are kind of holding it rigid, although the, the strike side may get a little warped. Okay. Yep. In a pocket door. Oh, huge in a pocket door. Here's what happens in a pocket situation. Because it's top hung now. It's not only top hung and not supported on either side, mm -hmm. but you've put it into a cool, low pressure system. Okay, mm -hmm. with no air movement. A door that's hanging on hinges has usually air movement under because there's a return air gap. Right. Okay, so it dries out the bottom of the door. You get into that pocket, where it's a, which, which starts as a low pressure system. All the warm air in the house is drawn to that cool pocket. Right. Okay, it settles in there. It basically puts that door in a sauna and it, and it just bows. And you notice that it drags against the wall uh -huh. when it's coming out. Uh -huh. And this great. is, it's just so vital with any door, whether it's the highest end solid core wood door or whether it's the lowest end hollow core door, when you're hanging those pocket doors, I highly recommend, because the painters are never taking them out, I highly recommend that the installer yep. keep a little roller of primer and just prime the bottom and the top of that door. It solves all those problems. Oh, that's a great call. And it's so easy to so do. So finished carpenters and builders watching this, think about having your finished carpenter who is installing those doors actually throw that prime coat on if it's not already primed. A lot of times it's coming from the BNC factory already primed. It's good to double check that though. Exactly. All right, let's keep going on doors. We've got the solid, oh, I'm sorry, we forgot to talk cost. Oh, We're yeah. We're talking cost wise on a solid core door. So a solid core door pre hung again, the six foot eight version is going to be around 150 bucks. Okay. Okay. And an eight foot version is going to be around two, 210, somewhere in that ballpark. So it's definitely a step up in cost, but I think that's worth it for a, a better, uh, more solid door that's going to be um, a little more soundproof, but also a little more solid. 
Now, now I may have made a mistake here. Uh, you noticed that his eyes went up when I said soundproof. Let's talk about that for a second. So proof, we hate the word proof, okay? Yeah. It's, it's not soundproof. Now, I will tell you, this door transmits a lot less sound than this door does, yep. okay? So there is a benefit there. However, we talked about return air gaps under doors. Mm -hmm. So that right? undercut, the bottom of the yeah, door. Yeah, which is often three quarters, sometimes an inch. Floor. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and it allows airflow through the house, which yep. is very key. It also allows sound to go through the house, okay? Yeah. So that's where 90% of your sound is transmitting through a door opening. So a lot of people People will see the, you know, the, the flyer that talks about the soundproofing qualities of a solid core door, <laughs> and, and they'll be a little misled that, oh, this is going to soundproof my room. It's not, That's unless you point. do something with that air gap. And there are things you can do. I think yeah. you've talked about weather stripping around media room doors, right? Yeah, and another great thing on media room doors that I've shown a couple times on my channel is a drop-down sill. We talked oh, yeah. about this the other day. Pemco makes a drop-down sill, um, which fits in a... Uh, uh, you dado out the bottom dado, of the door. That's, that's right, right, under the yep. bottom of the door. And there's a pin on the door, so when the door's open, there's a pin that's exposed. When you close the door against the jam, the pin closes, it drops down that sill, and then it's going to stop that air gap. Anywhere there's airflow or light coming through, that's a great sound transmission. You could have the most expensive solid door in the world, but if there's an undercut with airflow, there's going to be some sound transmission. Exactly. Great point. You got it. All right, so then moving up from that solid corridor, what's next on our list there? Chris, you want to take over? You bet. Yeah, so as we transition over from our good, better to best, mm -hmm. in our better category, we're going to uh, work up to an MDF door. And we're still in the paint grade category, just to verify, right? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, they're MDF doors. So even within that category, we've got a lower grade and a higher grade. So, you know, in the lower grade or kind of the entry level model, it's more of a commodity based mm -hmm. door. Um, still well built. Um, you've got MDF. Uh, uh, panels that's going to keep the, everything real nice and stable. Mm -hmm. um, the cores on these are going to be more of a, uh, a wood type core. Okay. Um, not highly engineered. They're going to come primed, but not always the best priming on there. Mm -hmm. um, but again, they're, they're, a, they're a, a, a commodity based door that's going to have entry level pricing on it. And what is that entry level pricing while we're talking about? So on, on these type of doors here, you're probably talking around three or $400 pre-hung um, in a finger joint jam. Got it. And again, that's, and I'm sorry to interrupt. That's actually what I put in my house 14 years ago when I remodeled. Uh, I would have liked to have gone to a more expensive door, but that was a nice upgrade from a solid core door. I painted my doors 14 years later. I got to say, even with some dogs and, a, and a, uh, four kids that have grown up in my house, they've actually fared really, really well. I haven't had any problems with them. Yeah, they're durable. You know, being pre-primed, it's great because the painter can, you know, uh, sand that that primer down and put a nice finish coat on there. Now, Chris, I have router carved though, right. and there are other options beside that, right? Yeah, we talked about that. One other thing um, I would like to say on that too is um, the, uh, the, these have a, a solid wood style and rail, so that's, that's not highly engineered. Yeah, so the router carved doors you're talking about, that is kind of a mid-grade in between here. Mm -hmm. Basically, they've transitioned more to doing a, high, a higher version or a uh, more customized version of a style and rail door. So this is one of our companies uh, that we deal with that builds a true style and rail door, and it's really built to architectural standards. So it's built with the separate components where you've got the panel. Ah, so each piece of MDF is separate. It can be really uh, a true crisp molding so that when they put those styles and rails together, you've got nice crisp details, right? Yeah, these are built just like our custom wood doors are in our shop, but they're just made out of MDF. Got it. Um, of course, they're highly engineered. There's, uh, you know, in this particular slab door right here, you can see it's got an LSL engineered uh, core in the middle of it, and that's just to resist movement in it. Uh, but we were talking about the router carved versus uh, the, the, uh, the way the true style is put together, is you get to these very crisp corners uh, in, in these lines right here, in these lineal moldings. With a, with a router, you're only limited to going down to an eighth of an inch diameter on the, on the bits. Mm -hmm. So that's where you see a little bit of rounding on the, on the panels. That's great. Um, these are great. You know, this is more of a, a traditional style door. So you have a really nice raised panel with a real traditional uh, door mold on there that sticks out. So kind of a raised door molding. Mm -hmm. This is similar in look, but this is more of a modern style. So you have really cool layered pieces on there that really give those clean lines for the modern styled house. Love it. And then, of course, you know, the modern uh, started with slab doors, so uh, they've actually recreated the slab door instead of using a particle board core, as evidenced here. You can get these in, in slab doors as well. Mm -hmm. 
you've got an engineered uh, LSL uh, core that really makes for a stable door. Yeah, and I would say that that upgrade from the hardboard to the MDF, uh, it is a jump in price, but it's a nice upgrade in terms of durability and paint and uh, and just kind of resisting chipping and flaking and that sort of thing. Yeah, I lost my train of thought too early. So on these commodity style doors, you're very limited in the styles, meaning the panel layouts and mm -hmm. the stickings and the, and the components you can put on it. With this particular models here, you're unlimited. You can do flat panels with raised moldings. You could do raised panels with, with real lineal moldings. I mean, there's thousands of options on that. Yeah, and pre-hung on the higher uh, grade uh, MDF doors is gonna be about five or $600 in a finger joint jam. Now, okay. in many of the homes we do, they're gonna go and upgrade to a poplar jam. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got a beautiful prime door. We'll send out a solid poplar jam that's CNC routed for the hinges, so it's very crisp. And, uh, you know, that would probably add another, say, $100 to the price of that door. Yeah, I use a lot of poplar in my houses. And when I, when I did my personal house 14 years ago, I used a lot of finger-jointed pine. It's been okay. It's definitely a softer material. It doesn't take paint quite as well. That poplar is a nice upgrade. It's a little more durable, a little more solid. I use that uh, on my houses for most of my trim and my jams is all poplar these days. But you do spend a little bit more. Now instead of you know three to five hundred dollars a door, you got to add that extra hundred bucks for the poplar. We're just trying to give you all the price points and all the options. Here yeah, and guys. you know, again, presenting those options is great. I think uh, some clients are going to be you know want to do the lower price, but uh, I think there's a lot of value in using the poplar. Yeah. it's very clean, a lot of hard hard hardness to it. So. Chris, let me uh, interrupt you for one question. Uh, one question that came up that's related to this: as we move from those lighter doors, this hollow core to the solid core doors, talk to me about hinges and number of hinges that we're going to need or want. So, on a six eight door, an eighty inch tall door, we're typically going to utilize three hinges. Mm -hmm. um, on an inch and three eighths door, we use three and a half inch hinges. On an inch and three quarter door, we're gonna use four inch hinges. Okay. They're gonna be five H radius because our machining can, can route those out very easily. Yep. Okay? Um, when you get to an eight O door, you're gonna add one more hinge. You're gonna have four hinges on there. Yep, okay. Um, so, so six, eight doors in general, three hinges, unless you have a real lightweight, bump up to the eight O and you need four hinges. Um, can you give me any, uh, any difference in cost on the ball bearing hinges that I always spec? I wish I knew how much they cost, but I actually don't know. <laughs> yeah, so a ball bearing hinge is probably going to add 5 to $7 a hinge. Per hinge. It's probably fair. Okay, yeah. so another 20 or 30 bucks for door maybe. That's correct. And when we, uh, when we get to the higher end houses, we'll actually do all of the hinge prep on our CNC machines. And we've actually got a, a CNC hinge machine yep. that will square corner the hinges on there. So yep. if architecturally correct on a especially on a modern home, they'd like to see really nice, square, clean hinges on there. Uh, the old school way of doing it would be, we would send out the 5H radius hinges, then the carpenter would take his chisel and, and clean the rest of those corners out. Yeah. And while it would look decent, uh, it wasn't as clean as you'd like it. So quite as crisp. using everything on the CNC really makes everything clean. And typically in most of our, our upper end houses, we'll send out just a primed hinge on there because yep. we know the painters are gonna paint right over them. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's always suggested to uh, have the, the new door shipped out with a temporary hinge, let them paint all over them, and then trade them out with your nice finished hinges, and you see that real crisp line from the painted door to the finished hinge. Quick plug for BMC uh, as we're thinking about that, Chris. I've been buying doors from you guys for almost 15 years that I've been in business now. Uh, and one of the things I like about BMC, and there are other companies that do this as well, but you can specify all this, right? I'm gonna meet with a guy like Chris, who's my uh, outside salesperson, uh, and together we're gonna say, what are the things that I want? He can uh, nail that down for you, or she can, uh, and make sure that you're getting exactly what you need. And also, if you need to go down on cost, they can say, hey, have you thought about doing this or that instead? But you can specify down to the specific hinge you want, the specific door you want, the specific jam you want, so when that shows up, it's all fully customized. Uh, and that's one cool benefit of working with a, a really top-notch firm like you guys. Yeah, and that's going to change from job to job. I mean, you may be doing a spec home where mm -hmm. you're trying to be at a price point yep. or a truly high custom end home that, yep. uh, that you're pulling all the stops out. Love it. All right, so we've gone through the paint grade. Show me that first sample on the stain grade, and then we're going to pause for a second after that first one. Okay, so just this first one here. Again, this is uh, as, we're, as we're working our way up. We're getting into stain grade doors now. Of course, the price point goes up. Again, we've got an entry-level stain, stain grade door, which is similar to the... Uh, the, the uh, You're a little bit in the shadow on that. Will you bring yep, that door forward absolutely. so we can see what there it looks like? There we go. Like. 
The, uh, so it's a commodity-based stain grade door. Again, you're going to be limited on the panels and sticking options that you can get, but you can afford it, you know, if you're just an entry-level buyer and you want some stain grade doors in there. The, there's not an engineered styles or rails. It's, it's pretty basic. Hold it just like that one more minute. It's yep. a little hard to see in the video, yep. guys, but what we're looking at here uh, is the um, panel is MDF. And then you've got a veneer, which is really hard to pick up uh, even with our... A little, very thin veneer. A thin veneer, right? And then that veneer is actually curving into the panel. And then we've got a solid uh, wood style that is not the same wood as the veneer. This looks like it might be a fir or I don't know what... Alder. This, alder. Yep. Okay, there you go. So this is a, kind of an entry-level stain grade. Because this veneer is fairly thin, it could be chipped or damaged. It's going to be hard to fix later, but it's going to meet a price point. Yeah, and we talked about earlier that being a bladder pressed panel. Okay, yeah. So, you know, it's got the MDF panel that's got the scoop raised on it, and they take that thin veneer and basically uh, place bladders over them, which presses it down on it while the glue attaches to it. So it's just a way to achieve a, a raised panel look with somewhat of an engineered yeah. um, center. So, again, you're trying to resist movement and warping. And where do you think that price point comes in on that entry level stain door? So an entry grade stain level door like that is going to fall in the range of probably around five to six fifty. Okay. You know? So just a little bit more potentially than the nicer MDF paint grades. That's correct. Uh, to get into that stain grade. Chris, let's take a pause there for a second uh, because as we start getting into these stain grade doors, um, you can, of course, still buy slabs from lots of different manufacturers, as I have over the years. But one cool thing about BMC is that they've got a custom mill shop. And I took a tour yesterday that I'd love to have you show. It's about a two-minute video. Let's go see what the custom options are from BMC. You know I love my custom doors. And check out this beauty right behind me. Custom walnut door with this burled walnut inset. Man, that is cool. Now, Darren, you walked us through the process to make a more standard door. You know, the doors that we're seeing on most houses. But now we're in the custom side of what you do. Talk me through this. Okay, well, we take wood and it's rust or rough sawn, four quarter, eight quarter wood, mahogany, walnut, cherry, anything you can imagine. We'll even split species the door. So we take that rough lumber and we mill it down into our in our mill shop into a finished product. So what we do is we make the door styles and rails out of engineer core. That keeps the door stable. We do a little thicker veneer on the exterior skin of both sides of the door than some of our competitors do. Love that. And then we do a one inch edge cap. Most people just do a quarter. Now, you're asking yourself, why do you do that? Well, everybody dings their door up every once in a while, and if you do get a gouge, let's say, in the face of your door, it's not gonna come through the veneer and you're gonna be able to see the core, right? So we just think it's a better product. But you also have a super stable door because of that interior LVL core, right? You bet. Prevents the door from twisting and warping, and it allows us to make the door that is seven feet wide and 15 feet tall and Ooh. not have it be warping. So Dang, that's there a you big go. door. And then you got this door right here. You know, as you saw, this is over the top. Burled walnut slat panels. The Damn. material itself, just the panels is a thousand dollars. Dang. Okay, so this is truly a one of a kind door for you. Yeah, this is not a uh, an apartment door. This is definitely a custom home. Yeah, this is whatever, right? It's the architect, the designer, the builder, whatever they dream up, y'all can build, correct? Correct. If you envision something on the back of a napkin from lunchtime and you come in with our uh, engineers and designers, we can we can fabricate that door up from scratch. Inch and three quarter, two and a quarter, three inches thick, four inches thick is what we've made. Um, split species, so you might want to have a durable mahogany on the outside and then have a really nice black walnut on the inside. And that's going to give you two different looks of door, but it's also going to give you a better performing door overall as a wood door. Love okay. it, man. And I love how you've integrated the, both the craftsmanship. I saw your guys using calipers, but you've also got a very expensive CNC machine that we saw a door like this coming out of. It was really doing all those precision cuts, right? That's correct. Just like that million dollar investment we had in a production door, we got a half a million dollar investment in that CNC machine. Matt, I could take a chunk of wood, eight inches thick and square, and I could turn it into a sphere and I could write your name around it and with that machine. Okay? <laughs> That's really awesome. Darren, thank you for the tour. And guys, if you've got something, 
that you think you want to have built, definitely talk to your local BNC guys. They've got incredible capabilities. Back to the show and let's continue the program. Wasn't that a cool tour? Man, that rounded top walnut door with that burled inset that I saw yesterday. Ooh, that was a really nice door. Expensive door, but really pretty. Hey, want a quick reminder here, if you're on the live event here, the Q&A tab is how to ask your questions. We're gonna get to those in about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and we'll make sure we get to those. I'm seeing some great ones on here. Doug, Dusty, several of you have some good ones. I'm gonna get to that in a minute. So hit that uh, Q&A tab at the bottom of the Zoom link. That's where you can post your question, and I'll get those in a second. All right, Aaron, back to you. Uh, now, as we jump into stain grade doors, more custom homes, a little bit more money, there's some huge variances in those and how they're made. Why don't you walk us through those door sections? These nerdy details are awesome. I love it. There are big differences. And, you know, this is, this is you're going to see kind of a progression in where uh, technology has brought us a little bit with these doors. Uh, for instance, this is, this is a, an earlier model engineered door. I want, to, I want to reiterate, when we talk about engineered doors, okay, we are differentiating them from solid wood doors where you literally take, to get an inch and three quarter style, mm -hmm. okay, you're taking a two inch piece of rough lumber, planing it down, but it's a solid piece, right. okay? Those are beautiful, but they're also prone to warpage, okay? Yeah, and movement, right? And movement, right. And so when you engineer the style, you get the same beautiful look on the face, with the veneer, mm -hmm. okay, right here, but inside we're putting that engineered core yep. to the style in the rail, okay? In this case, it's a stave core. You see three big pieces, three or four big pieces of wood. This is kind of early generation, if you will, all right? And it was a great step forward, mm -hmm. okay? But it wasn't all the way there because these big pieces of wood still, if they're unprotected on the bottom and the top, can still, still wick, wick moisture. Yep. Exactly right. So we graduated to using even more highly engineered, uh, not composites, but like an LSL core, okay, which you see here, right? And this is a, this is a really interesting door. So you have this strand core that's made up of particle particle type product. It looks like an LSL that's or right. a PSL kind of yep. engineered uh, header material almost. Exactly. And, it's, and it, it doesn't absorb moisture, mm -hmm. okay? That doesn't mean you can't you can get away with not finishing your doors because right. there still are elements of this that are solid wood that you have to protect end grain yeah. on, okay? Yeah. Um, but we've also got an MDF uh, core in the middle of this panel. Uh, we'll, I'll show you this, let's go back typically here. Typically MDF is gonna be the most stable in terms of humidity and changes. So with that middle panel with a true style and rail door, you don't want that panel doing this, right? That's exactly right. In fact, you've seen panels that move and you have paint lines, right? So you have a cock joint that you cracks You have a cock right joint there. that cracks. That's exactly right. And yeah. so the more stable we can make these panels, the more we can mitigate that happening, Got okay? Um, also, we talked about, we talked a little bit about on this door here, the bladder pressed, okay? Okay, that was the thin veneer door. That's right, the thin veneer door. Uh, when, we, when we go to this level of door, we're now using actual solid, so you can see the MDF core here, but then there's three-eighths yeah, like uh, three you know, three thick eights, yeah. solid lumber for the outside of the panel, yep. okay, that allows us to do really true architectural details. Mm -hmm. Kind of get, gets back to that conversation we were having about router carved versus, you know, actually put together with square edges. And that's we can a door do that's going to last you a couple centuries, honestly, or a couple, you know, 100 years, because if you have a ding on that door, you want to refinish the door, you can sand it. You're not worried about sanding through veneer. If someone runs their bike into it and <laughs> nicks it, you could actually do a repair on it. That's a door that if you're building a house and think, hey, I want to pass this on to my grandchildren, that's more like what we're talking about, right? That's absolutely right. And the other thing, too, to remember is that, you know, uh, these doors will last as long as as long as you're in the house, as long as, as long if multiple generations, really, as long as they're taken care of yep. from the start with proper finishing and then maintenance, you yeah. know, cleaning and finishing. So let me pause you for one quick second. Yep. Point to that stave corridor a this second, guy. if you would, okay. and point to those staves on there. Right. Uh, I've talked about in past videos, my hidden doors, and I'll often refer to a stave corridor and BMC has made these for me a bunch in the past where the uh, door that I'm putting in the wall, let's say is a hidden laundry room door or a hidden mechanical room door. Usually it's on a shiplap wall, either vertical or horizontal shiplap, and I'm having my BMC rep custom order 
me a stave core door that's a flush panel door, meaning no molding. It's the outside panel is flush. But I like that stave core flush like that. That's right. Because now it's going to take my nails, my screws, all those things that I'm going to do is I put a panel on it. So if you're doing a, um, a hidden door project, talk to your BMC rep about a stave core flush panel door. And you guys can make that in a lot of sizes. I know I've ordered uh, 4 by 10 <laughs> or uh, maybe 6 by 12 or some crazy random sizes. Also, sometimes it's just a normal 3080 that's getting clad. Remember, those are heavy too, but that's when we go to the really cool and sometimes expensive hinges, the Sugitsune, uh, maybe Sauce, maybe Tectus. Right. Uh, and these guys can also source and install those for you uh, ahead of time too. You, you don't just have to use standard hinges. Right. And we'll get into uh, what you guys do towards the end of the program on that. But keep going. I just wanted to mention what that stave core could be used for. No problem. And a quick aside on door size, mm -hmm. okay? Doors are morphing into moving walls right now. Yeah. I mean, the sizes are getting outrageous. They're getting, you know, six, seven feet wide, 12 feet tall. Yep. And it's just extraordinary. And we have sources for all of that. Love it. So. Yeah, that's definitely a trend in the industry, I would say, Aaron. Yep. So these two are just, again, they're just further refinements of, of these processes to get, to get the product even more stable, okay? Mm -hmm. We're learning every day what works, okay? Yep. And so, you know, you just see a slightly different core. Um, you have your LVL type core, which just is straighter, more cost core. effective. You know, it's just, it's, it's highly engineered and it's really, really great. That's good so. stuff. Yeah. Hey, we're running a little short on time. We're sure. 40 minutes in, some great information. Let's switch to exterior doors, guys. We've talked all about interior doors. Oh, before we get, forget, though, I forgot to ask you cost-wise on some of those more top-of-the-line stain grades. Yeah, pretty much for, for budgeting purposes, you're starting at 1000 bucks, okay, yeah. per door. Gotcha. But it goes anywhere from there, depending on the number Go of up. panels you have it just and the type of wood, yep. right? I mean, there's a vast di difference in, in wood species pricing. Yeah, so. so just to recap, paint grade, we may be looking at uh, you know, a $100 door on the low end, $150, $200 door on the solid core right. uh, paint grade, then up to three, four, five, six hundred bucks on the nicer uh, That's right. um, MDF, really smooth paint grade doors. The entry level on the stain grade, maybe five, six hundred bucks, and then right. a thousand and more as we get up to those really more expensive and nice doors. That's exactly right. You know that round top burled walnut? Mm -hmm. You're probably in the ten thousand dollar range. Yeah, that's a nice so, door. It is a nice <laughs> That looked like a ten thousand dollar door. We like to sell those. We do. <laughs> <laughs> we do. The other nice thing, we, we talked about this. Because of the construction here, um, because it gets more and more effective at keeping moisture out of the door, it makes uh, stain grade wood doors effective for exterior use as well. Ah, that's right, because now we've got an LVL core. That's really not going to move. Correct. And you could take a, a blank door, meaning a slab door, and add an exterior jam on that. That's, that's exactly that's right. That's made for exterior, and you're good to go. That's exactly right. In fact, when we do that, these cores, while they may be a particle core, they are water resistant, highly water resistant cores. Love it. So. What are the two cutouts on the end uh, that we're looking at that look like they've got insulation in between? Well, they essentially do. So, so these are basically commodity exterior doors, okay? And this first one here we're looking at is what we call a flush metal door. Mm -hmm. And you can see here, it's got a polystyrene core that gives it rigidity, mm -hmm. but it's got a very thin, shoot, I don't know, maybe 20 gauge or 22, 24 gauge uh, metal face, okay? okay? Um, you see these a lot on apartment doors, yep. okay? They dent pretty easily. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't take much. The mason will dent it pretty easily, and it's, and it's hard to get that dent out. Um, I will show you a couple features of them. The styles are an LVL-type uh, door, so it's, it's rigid, okay? The bottom rail is actually composite, so this is a non-rot bottom rail. It's like okay? a decking product almost, right? That's a, yeah, th similar to that. And that's those right. cuts that you're seeing in there, that's where your door bottom is going to slide its kerf into. That's so right. So you've got a rubber... Uh, door bottom that is changeable in the future. You can always pull that door bottom out of here and just pop another one in. And That's a lot correct. of residential single family builders are using those as their fire door, which is between their laundry room and mudroom and garage too, right? That is true. We see, we see a lot of that, but we also see a lot of uh, 20 minute rated solid core hardboard products in that application uh, as well. Okay, and usually 20 so. minute rating is what uh, is is required. Yep. You can go to higher ratings though if you desire. Uh, Absolutely. For 40 or 60 minute ratings. And that's true. Uh, Pete had a question about that. Fire resistance of exterior doors. Uh, 
any of those uh, metal or wood doors could be fire rated. You need to talk to your rep about that though, if that's something you're interested in. If you're building in a wildfire zone or that's something that you're, uh, not wildfire zone, uh, uh, WUI, wildfire, wildland urban interface zone, you might actually have to provide a door that has a rating on it. Right, and we can, by the way, we can source these paneled, true paneled doors in pretty much any rating you want. Ah, oh, that's cool. Okay, even for, for interior, exterior, whatever. Love it. Um, okay, so then yeah. next from the metal is, what's the one on the end there? So first, the metal, the price point on the metal oh, yeah. is gonna be a six, eight door pre-hung is gonna be around 400 bucks, okay. okay? An eight foot version of the metal, and this is just flush metal, no glass, no panels, yep. is gonna be about $500, okay. okay? From there, we go to its fiberglass big brother, okay? And what's the big benefit of going to fiberglass? Well, it's really rigidity. I mean, these just don't dent, mm. okay? And if you were to, uh, to create a you know a break in it or something, which would take a pretty pretty hard uh, impact, yep. bondo and paint, and you don't even know it happened. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry to say that in my production builder days, I did a lot of bondo <laughs> on those steel doors over the years from the houses I built. So, uh, but the fiberglass, you have a hard time denting it to begin to begin with. I think. Well, this skin, this fiberglass skin, is is almost an eighth inch thick. Also, it, it's just much more rigid than the metal. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you do you do step up in price a little bit. A six eight version is probably going to be five hundred fifty bucks. Okay, okay, instead of four hundred here, yep. an eight foot version is probably going to be in the nine hundred range. All right, and again, yep. you can go on. Up. If you add panels to this, where you have it kind of embossed like these are, right, then you're going to step up in price. And if you add glass, well, then it's, it's you know, anything, right? Quick note on price, too. We've been throwing prices out a lot. Uh, we're we're uh, pricing these as doors that are delivered to your job site with the jam, with the hinges, everything on them. And we're kind of quoting retail prices here. Uh, if you're a builder, get an account with BMC, have them actually quote those. It may be a slightly different price. It's true. Uh, the prices we're quoting would cover you, typically, yeah. if, you're, if you're doing some quick budgeting. Yeah, that's right. So um, Let's transition to the exterior sills, Chris, and or really all the other components, I should say, that go into an exterior door. Let's talk about those because, again, when you're ordering custom doors, you can get whatever you want, and if you don't specify it, you may not get what you want. That's so true. by saying what you want, you're going to get a really good product. And you may pay a little bit more for it, but you get what you pay for. That's right. And I will say one more thing on the ratings. You certainly can do fire ratings on any of the doors we provide. I think anything after 60 minutes, you're going to have to get stamped. Uh, but we can also do ballistic rated doors, too. Everybody's doing safe rooms these days. So I see these safe rooms, and I, I ask the difference. I is, this, is this just to protect you from a tornado? Or do you want to protect you from a 357? A bullet-resistant door. You bet. We can do it. any of these panel doors with the ballistic what rating on it. What do to make it bullet resistant? So there this, is a, this just got a lot more interesting, yeah, so, my friend. Because really we, like in, in a lot of our higher end homes, there's always a safe room. <laughs> and so there is, there is lined metal in the middle of it uh -huh. and they kind of layer everything else around it. That's and cool. literally you can go, there's different levels. So, you know, the beginning level may stop a, a 22 mm -hmm. and it go all the, goes all the way up to an RPG, you oh know, rating. Gosh. So just depends on the application, but. Have we that can, client call me, I want to build that. <laughs> yeah. That sounds really cool. I can't tell you who that is. I know you so, can. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. So we talked about exterior doors. Uh, certainly we're going to provide a frame that's going to have weather stripping on it. And then we have a number of different threshold options. Okay. The first threshold option we're going to show you is uh, from one of our manufacturers that makes a retractable deck sill. Okay. So first off, all the contractors. Retractable, FYI. Replaceable. Replaceable. Yeah. Replaceable. Sorry. I'm sorry. I said retractable. <laughs> retractable. It actually retracts back into the house. That's right. Well, we're going to talk. Re replaceable. Uh, we'll talk retractable here in just a minute. This is Endura's RDS, replaceable deck sill. Product. That's right. So you've been very familiar with I've, that. I've so installed a lot of these over the as years. A, as a contractor, you can appreciate that at least we try to send these out with a protective cover on it. Yep. But that doesn't always protect from all the job site wear and tear that oh, we yeah. get. We've dinged a few sills and had to break out the sill all over the years to replace the sill out. It's never fun. That's right. So this system right here, as Aaron's showing you, uh, say if we had a, uh, a stone mason drop a brick or a piece of stone on there and this gets all dented up. Oh, you're actually going to pull it out for us, Aaron. Yeah. I like it. And, and I would suggest Come waiting till the very end of the job to do this. Don't wait until a month out because you may be doing it again. Yep. Uh, but Aaron's going to show with just a, uh, a uh, 
I've done this demo a we're couple simu- times before. Simulating. It's cool. simulating. Yeah, simulated right. demo it's, it's here a putty on the live. Knife. Yes. Okay. All right. You just put it in that front groove. Here, turn right. this around so you can see that front groove yep. real quick, if you don't mind. Sorry to uh, take over here. Really? By the way, there's no, doing? there's absolutely no wood in this threshold. By the way, it's all synthetic yeah. and metal, so that's another so advantage. So you this up, and right. now it's going to slide out, right? Now we can take the deck off. Like I'll take that. that. That's sick. Yeah. I like that. We can bring the replacement deck right back on and it'll snap into place. You're gonna mallet that in place. That's right. we're gonna mallet it in with a rubber uh, mallet. We're gonna and snap that could it in be place. any one of uh, several colors too, right? That could be bronze or black or silver. Well, that's a great silver point. Or if, if, if you misspec it, right? And you right. didn't get the finish your homeowner wanted, simple switch. Or they switch awesome. hardware, which happens occasionally. All the time. Yeah. All right, cool so that's sure. the, uh, the replaceable deck Love it. system. So then we're gonna get into the articulating threshold here, which lowers, and I'll let Aaron kind of show you how that works. So as the door closes, it, it, it closes snug up against that, uh, the articulating portion of that so threshold. the door bottom uh, is fixed, but what's happening is that uh, threshold, uh, right where the door bottom hits the Endura sill, it articulates, it kind of moves up and down. It's a little hard to see there, but it's, uh, but it's actually doing uh, this action and moving up and down. As the, it's up here, the door closes, it's down, it provides a little bit of pressure on Let's it. Let's look through this hole right here if we can. Oh, there you go. And that's what I was thinking about when we we're, when were talking retractable. So what, what he's looking at right here is this is moving. A little hard to tell here, uh, but that's exactly what's happening there. And tell me about the difference on this jam. I'm seeing two different colors on this jam. Yeah, here. so this illustrates our, uh, our frame saver jam technology that, uh, that we've used for nearly 20 years, I believe. Is that right? Wow. So the bottom six to four to six inches is a synthetic material. So again, Aaron was talking about the cellulose of the wood and how vertically that water is drawn to, to be drawn up the jam. This prevents that, provides a block basically, uh, doesn't allow the water to move up there. So it's, it's been great for us and really cuts down on those calls. I love it. Guys, we're running short on time. I've only got 11 minutes left in the program. I've got uh, 437 questions we need to answer. No, not quite that many. Better hurry. Uh, we do have some great questions from the crowd. And by the way, if you're watching this uh, later that's been taped, uh, make sure you sign up for our newsletter. I'll have a link in the description below so that you'll get informed on these and you make sure you know when we're doing these. We do this about once a month or so. Uh, we call it our live build show. And I'd love to have you join us live so that it, as questions come up, you can throw it on here and I'll be able to answer those for you. Um, several good questions, but uh, let me start with this one from Tom Cross. Can a multi-point lock be used on a 20 minute fire rated door between the house and the attached garage? In other words, you just have to use the standard double bore or there are other locking multiple point locks that can be added as well. Yes, we can utilize any type of lock system with that. Um, the advantage to us having a CNC or actually a couple CNCs that are at our, our plant, uh, we certainly can mill to any type of uh, hardware specifications. Now, we will tell you that they're usually gonna provide a template and we always ask for the real hardware. Templates are great, but we like to have the real hardware at hand. So if you're thinking about that, buy your hardware ahead of time, give that to your rep, make sure they get it done right. Yeah, that's a great one. Hey, Adrian has a great question next. Doors are a small component of the overall building. I'm assuming he means exterior doors. But what about the difference between air tightness and thermal performance between doors? Great question. All these doors we've talked about today have been basically slab doors that can be ordered from a manufacturer and then built at BMC Millwork or other Millwork uh, firms around the country. You can also, through BMC or others, BMC reps uh, Marvin and Anderson and some others, you can also order a door, let's say, from Marvin. When you order an exterior door from Marvin, if there's glass in it or other components, Usually that's gonna be a clad door and there's gonna be a sticker on it that has a rating. It's gonna have a U factor, it's gonna have a solar heat gain coefficient number on there. And these guys at BMC or others can help you order that as well so that it might be a component in your house that's gonna be passive house rated. That's what my house is. And I worked very closely uh, with my window and door guys to make sure that the window and doors were a part of my overall efficiency. Uh, when we talk about insulated exterior doors, there's going to be an R value on those, but the air tightness is going to be good, but maybe not quite as good as a passive house rated door. And usually when we think about a, uh, a window and door manufacturer like the Marvins Andersons of the world, usually that air tightness is going to step up to the next level. You're going to have multi-point locks, 
that door is going to really push into the uh, weather stripping. There might be more than one weather stripping as well. All stuff to think about. Adrian, great question. Um, this is kind of a random, uh, or not a random, this is a more overall generic question from Jeff Williams. Does BMC make their doors in Dallas, or do they have similar plants in other areas of the country? In other words, is everything coming out of Dallas? Well, that's a great question. Um, Dallas is one of our largest uh, mill shops, okay? But we have numerous door hanging plants around the country. Now, that's door hanging. In Dallas, we showed you on the tours that you saw the videos of that we can custom make doors. Mm -hmm. And I believe we have five or six facilities around the country that do that, yep. okay? Gotcha. So in other words, when you're ordering doors, where I used to, I used to work in Portland, Oregon. I was a BMC customer. Uh, that was when I first started using BMC 18 years ago. They had a mill shop in Portland where I was, uh, and so my doors were coming locally. And that that's the case uh, for a lot of parts of the country. And I think uh, BMC has what 140, 150 locations around the nation, something it's, like that. It's something like that. And I want to I want to make another point here on on the custom door shop, okay? Even though we've only got five or six custom door shops around the country, those custom door shops are available to any any BMC location, any market that we serve currently, they can call us and interface with us and send us the specs and we can produce those doors in those custom shops for the other markets. Got it. Um, this didn't come from questions, but we talked about this earlier, and I think this is worth uh, repeating. If you're doing a remodel uh, and you want to change out your doors, let's say, um, what suggestions do you have for the remodelers watching this in terms of ordering doors? Should they order a slab door and have their finished carpenter figure out how to put it in the hole, or should they do another option? Uh, what do you think about that, Chris? Pre-hang them. Pre -hang. I mean, that's the, that's the, the, the quick answer. Uh, what you'll find out when you remodel in a home, a 2-0 door isn't always a 2-0 door. You know, 20, we think a 2-0 door being 24 inches wide by, you know, 6 eighths, 80 inches tall. Uh, the newer standards are more undersized, so a 2-0 door may be 23 and 13 16 by 79 and a quarter. So if you're doing remodeling yourself, get a professional to come out there and measure those for you. If you're just changing out the slabs, maybe you're in a historical home and you want to keep the casing and that jam intact, mm -hmm. and I understand that. Yep. But if you're just trying to save a few bucks, um, go ahead and get the, 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 the door pre-hung. You're going to spend a little more money, but I promise you in the end... You'll make it up on the labor. You're going to make it up on... Yeah, that's <laughs> exactly right. the frustration right. level. That's right. Yeah, that's a great advice. Uh, if you're in a historic home, certainly you're, you're going to have a great finished carpenter that's going to fit that door in the opening uh, and keep that all that historic uh, trim. But if you're in a more modern house, a house from you know 1950 on, let's say, I would just pull that door out and replace it with a new one. Uh, great question, Matt. By the way, just kidding. Uh, I'm in. This is a great question from an anonymous person. I'm in the very early stages of a modern gut reno and want to use flush mount interior doors throughout. What would be the best type of door to achieve that very streamlined look? So we illustrated a couple different options earlier. You've got. You know, depending on your price point, you've got hollow core slab doors that's going to be entry level. You've got a solid core hardboard door that's going to be an upgrade from that. And then you've got the premium grade that's going to be completely engineered. You can do inlays in. You can do uh, uh, cuts that, uh, angle cuts that are going to show reveals. Um, it's unlimited. You can inlay steel, all types of stuff in there. That door is Primed, it's going to hold up very well. Um, that's a great modern look. And speaking of modern look, another question that's kind of a piggyback on that. Uh, John Raynone said, "What type of door frame do you recommend if you want no casing, meaning your frame itself is going to be exposed?" Um, I was in a house not too long ago that was a very expensive resale modern house, uh, and they basically just took a door that was meant to have casing on it, didn't install the casing had this regulate detail, and honestly, it looked terrible. Yeah. Um, talk to me about how a builder can, uh, can pull that off. Will you take that on Air Force? We sure. talked about this last night at dinner, didn't yep. we? You bet. Um, and and you, had, you had another question there before about what technologies are coming that allow us to do more things. Another great so, question. So, well, frames, so frames, specifically, we see a lot of advances in frames, OK? Uh, in fact, um, in some applications where we want that flush look, all right, we will thicken the frame to an inch and three quarter like a door. We'll make it like we make 
the style and rail of a door with LVL core, okay? And that does a few things for us. That lets us put hidden hinges in it mm -hmm. that are completely backed. They don't go through, and then you have to find the, the, the stud with those, okay? Yep. And it gives, you, it gives you a flat to work with and work up to. And there are so many different applications, as you know, Matt, about ways to marry sheetrock to those wide, flat jams, okay? But they're, they're true square corners, right? They're not rounded or eased corners, which kind of betray the look, mm -hmm. right? And that they give you the flat spot you need to work with. We can also modify those with curfs in the back if you have different, you know, channels you want to run, whatever. Yeah. So a lot of applications. Any, you know, most of the reps can tell you about all those. And, uh, and on that question too, uh, John, who asked that, I actually have made a couple videos about that. Uh, that kind of modern flush, no casing door. There's a million ways to do it. Uh, made several videos about that because it's a question I get a lot. So uh, go check out my playlist on interior doors, uh, or I think it's actually a finished carpentry play playlist that will that will have some of those details. We are running out of time, y'all, and I don't want to go late. We had lots of good questions. I'm sorry we couldn't get to all those. Um, Let's see, is there a way that I might be able to actually answer some of these in the comments below. We're going to post this also to YouTube and to buildshownetwork.com. Uh, guys, I really appreciate you joining us. And huge thanks to these two guys right here. Aaron and Chris, fantastic uh, reps for BMC. Lots of good information. Um, if you're not currently a Build Show subscriber, hit that subscribe button below if you're watching this on YouTube. We'd love to have you join us. And hit the link for the newsletter below. We send out an email every Friday from me in the morning. It's going to give you a wrap-up of everything that's new on our site. And if we've got these live events, you'll also have a link to that so you can sign up for it and ask questions. Before we end this, though, I want to take a minute and tell you about these guys. Uh, these guys are a part of the elite uh, Green Berets of BMC, the SEAL team uh, leaders of uh, BMC. They don't work on normal houses like I build. They work on the next tier up from my houses. Architecturally significant, estate houses, houses that have very large budgets and usually take multiple years to build. These guys lead that team. And so I'm gonna leave the uh, video today with a quick uh, kind of, here's what we do with these guys. And I also wanna tell you, if you're not following me, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. The problems we're solving for our clients are the biggest problems. We tackle what most others won't. We bring to fruition really the biggest dreams in the architectural and build world. Because it's not so easy sometimes to put your thoughts down on paper. And they captured everything that I was trying to achieve in this house. What I enjoy most about working with our clients is the ideas that they come up with. We're always blown away. An Ultra Project is a design-driven, a state-level project of architectural significance. The Ultra team is the only window door millwork team backed by a top three national supplier that is 100% dedicated to Ultralux projects. I look at us as the conduit between the designer, the architect, and the builder. The Ultra Team is just a, a dream to work with. They're a secret weapon, and they come in and make an architect's life so much better. From idea creation to execution is really where they play a huge role. We bring the resources, the awareness, the discretion, and the project stamina that's required to manage long, multi-year projects. They're really looking out for us. Uh, I know I can rely on the information that they provide because they're going through the, the details in the drawings just like we do. They're like an extension of our company. We have the capabilities to take a totally unique design and create it from scratch. So every day we're being asked to climb new mountains, answer new challenges, and come up with ways to implement these grand visions. We help people that dream really big get what they want.